Hello, everyone. Well, <laughs> I'm Marikita Solis, and I'm excited to be here with Nina. She is going to give us some fantastic new desserts. This is a six-part series in WeDidIt.Health to help you with your holidays when we have guests. And I know people say, oh, yuck, vegan plant-based dessert. And they roll their eyes or crinkle up their noses. Well, Nina's here to make sure <laughs> that that doesn't last. So she's going to really help us with this. And um, it looks like, um, well, I look, I'm looking at some text up here. So everybody, thank you for watching. And let us know where you're joining from. If you're watching the replay, let us know because we're here to help you with your desserts. But first we need to know a little bit about Nina. So if you're ready, Nina, let's go. Sounds good. I'm in sunny San Diego, but it is cold out. So I wanted to do this outside where it's, you know, I've, you know, wear a nice greenery because I don't want to go with a vegan, uh, but it's too cold. So hopefully the next one will be a little bit warmer and we can do it all outside. Sounds good. Well, Mother Nature, you know, sometimes she has different plans. Yes, she has her own. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just like Mother Internet. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get to our presentation. Let's see here. Give me a second. Yeah, Sounds well, I, I'll just tell you guys. So my name is Nina. And oh, the neighbors doing it. They're sawing down the tree now. <laughs> of course. So, Perfect timing. Oh, oh, boy, you can hear me okay. <laughs> or laugh with me. So my name is Nina. I'm a certified personal trainer and strength and fitness coach. I am a plant-based grassroots ambassador. I have a certification in fitness nutrition, and I am the author of four books. And I am a type 1 diabetic, and I was born with a rare dairy allergy. I am allergic to the protein and all dairy products. So um, if you want to click the next slide. So my friend, she named the phrase in front of you, no move for you. It was a reminder for her that I couldn't have any dairy. So when I was born, I would get sick a lot because I would get uh, cross-contaminated from, from dairy wherever I, wherever I went. So what would happen to me is when I was younger, I would just eat something and then I would just throw up. But as I got older, it became more and more serious and I would have an anaphylactic response. So my tongue would swell, my throat would swell. I, if I ate a little bit too much, I would throw up until I was throwing up bile and then I would be so exhausted, I would, I would pass out. Can you hear that, the, the song? Oh my goodness, it's so distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to the new slide. <laughs> so when I, uh, actually you can go forward, it's okay. So okay. just recently I asked, you know, knowing that I've had this severe dairy allergy my whole life, I asked my mom out of curiosity, what was my first food? And I thought she was gonna say applesauce. She told me my first food was cottage cheese and I was floored. And I said, why would you give me cottage cheese? And she said, because it's high in protein. <laughs> next, <laughs> next slide, Pete, please. Probably the worst thing she could have given me. Is that the next slide? That's perfect. So okay. when I was a teenager, it was, difficult dating too. So because if everything pretty much has dairy when you go out. So I would pretty much just drink root beer and eat French fries when I went out on dates. And also it was very problematic because when somebody would, you know, eat a pizza, I would breathe in the pizza and it felt like I was having a heart attack. So even now, if I would go to a restaurant, if, the, if it was a pizza restaurant, 
I would have to be outside. And the circulation outside would have to be really good, lots of airflow, because I can't breathe that in. For me, it's extremely toxic. Next slide. All right. So coffee houses are also a problem because they froth the milk in the air. And so I found that out when I would go to, you know, have coffee with my friends or just, you know, stop in and out for some tea. I, I couldn't go in there anymore because just breathing in, you know, when you're breathing something in, I'm basically inhaling the food, literally. So there, it's going out is really, it's tough for me. It's always been a little bit challenging. Next. So when I was in my 30s, I got the chicken pox. And as a child, it's usually no problem. But as an adult, you can actually die from it. And a couple years after, I would say several years later, I started having these really strange symptoms where my eyes start burning and I would have to blink a lot. And then I started getting really, really thirsty and I started losing a lot of, of weight. And people were telling me, you need to eat more, you need to exercise less. And I said, I said, I, I'm really not eating less and I'm not doing that much exercise. So I went to a doctor and he diagnosed me with diabetes. And at first they didn't know if I was type one or type two because one, I wasn't heavy and I had no antibodies. Now they only tested me for this one test, which I have on the screen It's the GAD 65. And I was tested in 2006 and it came back negative. So this happens to a lot of people and they are misdiagnosed as type one. I'm sorry, uh, let me rephrase that. They're misdiagnosed as type two when they are type one. So they put me on oral medications. You just take a pill. And it was really, really hard because I'm a little person. I'm only five feet tall. And these pills are typically, all medications are typically tested on men and not even on women. So I would take these pills and I would be out and about. And then all of a sudden I would almost collapse. And then my husband would have to either find a sugar pack for me to eat or I'd have to carry something sweet. I would carry candy with me so I wouldn't pass out and go into a coma. So if you have really low blood sugar, it's extremely dangerous. So one of my, a nurse was asking me, did you have a, a very bad cold? Did you have the flu or did you get, you know, some sort of virus, uh, you know, recently before you got the, uh, the diagnosis? And I was thinking, hmm, and then I realized chicken pox. So she said that she thinks that the chicken pox virus attacked my pancreas and then my body was attacking the virus, but then it just kept attacking, attacking. So it damaged my pancreatic beta cells so much that the, the, they weren't producing enough insulin. And because I was taking the medication, the oral medication, what that does is it burns out your pancreas. Now, and a typical, typically it takes three years for that oral medication to basically destroy your beta cells, burn them out so much where then you have to be on insulin. Well, it burned out mine in one year. So I was put on insulin within one year of diagnosis and then they diagnosed me as 1.5, which means I can survive without insulin, but I would be very sick. And uh, I wouldn't be hospitalized, but I wouldn't be well. Next. So I tried a whole bunch of different diets when I was diagnosed. So I tried a raw vegan diet and on that diet, it was, it was uh, raw foods, but I would use a dehydrator and it included all these delicious desserts that are raw vegan. And I used a lot of nuts and I used agave and it was very, very high in fat. And I actually gained weight and I didn't feel good in my blood sugars or worse. I also tried, and this one actually was 
you know, fairly recently where I went, worked with a plant-based doctor and I tried a 24 hour or longer, I actually went up to 32 hours for water fasting. And so what that is, you do not eat anything for this period of time, but you drink a lot of water more than usual. And then you kind of take it easy. It is kind of like, I just watched movies and I read books and I just, I just stretched. Uh, and the longest I went was for 32 hours. I wanted to go for a whole weekend, but as a type one, it can, your blood sugars can be kind of chaotic and mine were dropping really low. And I wasn't on any insulin because I didn't want it to drop really low. And I got really skinny. I actually ended up anorexic and I got down to 85 pounds and all my family was telling me, you, you got to stop this. And I, I told the doctor, I said, yeah, I can't do this water fasting anymore. I'm just getting much too thin and I'm just feeling really weak. And it, the tough thing too is about water fasting is that after you come off the fast, you can't just eat. So I would have to have, make a green juice, small amount. And then, then later, maybe like, like, let's say if it was, you know, the first meal would be a green juice. And then the second meal, a couple hours later would be some raw food. Like I would make like zucchini noodles with a little dressing, some raw dressing. I don't remember what it was. I think I did like a nut or seed dressing. And then several hours later, then I could have a small real meal. But the thing is with, when you get off the fast, your enzymes, are depleted. So my blood sugar, when I ate the real meal, it just skyrocketed. But that's why you don't just jump into whole foods. The first time I did it, I made a mistake and I was like, I'm hungry. And so I had, had some uh, soup with like potatoes and carrots and my stomach was not having it. So if you do water fast, read up to it or do it the right way. <laughs> and, but unfortunately it didn't work because usually water fasting takes more than just one day to show results. And there's many benefits to water fasting. It can really heal your body. I also tried a vegan, vegan ketogenic diet with intense exercise and very little insulin. And that just really caused me a lot of pain in my joints. I was exercising between three to five hours a day and all that exercise put way too much wear and, wear and tear in my my knees and my ankles were in chronic pain and i was just trying to see well maybe if i stop the insulin and just try the exercise then my body will produce more insulin now there are bodybuilders who use insulin to get bigger it's it's really for diabetics and you don't use medication unless you absolutely need it so then i was working with a nutritionist and I had her analyze my diet and she said you need to add fish so I was eating a little bit of fish but the rest of my diet was raw vegan and uh or actually I did a it, it was it wasn't raw it was a well, yeah actually no it wasn't raw it was ketogenic so a ketogenic diet is where it's very high in fat so I was eating 85 to 95 percent of my calories from fat and the fat was from nuts and seeds. And so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So also I was trying to lose some weight. I was a little bit overweight. And so I tried, I tried everything. I tried to eat right for your blood type. That's where you get your blood type tested. And then you find out, you know, if you're A, B or whatever it is, or um, and then you go to this chart or the book and it tells you, okay, this, these are the foods you eat. It was horrible. It was like mostly chicken. It was just really, I felt terrible. I tried one that's called no complex carbs afternoon. So that means after 12 o'clock, you basically just don't eat any carbs and it was horrible. So I tried extreme calorie reduction, which did not help me lose weight. It actually lowered my metabolism. I tried wheat-free and gluten-free. That did not help me lose weight. I tried paleo. It made me gain weight. I tried Whole30, and you do that for 30 days. I tried a ketogenic diet, and that just made my insulin resistance worse. I tried bodybuilding diets. I think I had four or five, 
And some, when I was working with trainers, they designed these diets for me. And I was so depleted. I hated it. It's hard sleeping. And I've tried many different vegan diets too. I tried gourmet raw, which is the one I told you about earlier, where you do the dehydrated pizzas and you make all these fancy nut concoctions and they're super delicious, but you, it's okay to eat this, just not all the time. Um, I did the raw fruit diet, the 80, 10, 10, and I was feeling terrible. It was like I was exhaling fructose all the time. So certain vegan diets, there's so many, which is kind of kind of neat. And you can kind of tweak your vegan diet to make it work best for you. Some people do better with more fruit. Some people do better with more greens. So it's kind of nice we can tweak it. Um, I did one for a week. It was just greens and seeds. It was green smoothies. And when I threw up, I was like, <laughs> I can't do this. I did high raw where you eat mostly raw foods. And then you can do beans and, you know, like tofu, stuff like that. And then I also tried the low fat plant-based diet. Next. So after I got diagnosed as diabetic and I tried these diets and they didn't work, I decided that I wanted my goal to be as strong and as healthy as I could be. So I was doing the best as I could with my diet. And so I couldn't get the weight off on my own. I couldn't get enough strength on my own. So I tried trainers and I found out I love training. So I am the little thing on the left with the peach leggings and I am five feet tall. And the gentleman in the middle was one of my trainers. He's six feet and the gal on my, the other, the end, the green, she is, uh, she is four foot 11. So she makes me look tall. <laughs> and so at that time, I was doing a, a low, lowish carb, about 135 grams of carbohydrates a day. And every, at each meal, I would have about 30 grams of carbs. So I would weigh my carbohydrates or I would just use like half of a, a cup. And then I would weigh all my proteins, just one to make sure I wasn't eating too much protein. And I didn't know about, you know, that, that vegan proteins are healthier at that time, but I gained a lot of strength and I loved it. And I loved how weight training just made me feel empowered and I got strong and I got muscle next. So I love training so much and people at the gym saw that I was knew what I was doing. I was gaining strength and they, um, they wanted my results and I would sometimes train by myself and they, people started asking me to train them and I, I didn't have any certification. So I decided I, I would train people for free and then I decided I should just get my certification. I want to make sure that I'm training people correctly, that I know what I'm doing. So I got my certification in fitness. Um, uh, well, no, that nutrition one was separate, but I also got my certified personal trainer. It's called a CPT. I also got an additional one, which is a certified strength and fitness coach. And I, I still train people to this day. I, the youngest I've trained, I think was, oh goodness, I think it was eight. And the oldest I've trained is 104 and a half. So that's me on the left and uh, that's both me. <laughs> Next. So when the Game Changers came out, my husband and I watched the movie and we were just like, wow, we were so like, excited to find out that you can be vegan and you can be super strong and it is the healthiest thing to to eat and animal products are really bad for you and so my husband turned to me and he, this is this meat eating guy he loved his steaks every week and he loved ribs and he said we're going vegan it wasn't even like a question it was a statement he said this is what we're doing and so we did. So we, we just started eating vegetables and fruits and coming up with all these concoctions. And, and, and uh, yeah, it was hard at first. 
some things were hard and some things were easy. We're still trying to figure out how to make burgers. <laughs> But everything else, we've made amazing dishes, and it's just fun getting creative in the kitchen. Next. So I love my vegan diet. I was getting stronger. I felt fabulous. But then it was really strange. I started getting these odd symptoms. And when I look back, I actually started having them before I went vegan. And because I looked at old pictures of my hands. And I noticed that in my hands, they were turning gray and they would actually turn gray from about here and they would go all the way up. And I was really had very, very cold extremities and I thought it was just poor circulation. And, but when I was eating my vegan diet, I was eating processed foods. I was having oil. There was these peanut butter cookies that I used to love. They were gluten-free, they were flour-free, but they had sugar and they were all really big and they were like, you know, this big. And uh, I would eat those every week and we would saute our vegetables and oil. We didn't realize at the time how harmful oils are. We didn't know they damage our endothelial cells. And at a, as a trainer, I was at the gym, so I, you know, carry around weights. I would work out at the gym myself, and I was at the point where my hands were hurting so bad, I could no, no longer hold the weights. I couldn't stand anymore just walking across the gym because my feet were swelling and they were turning really red, and my toes and my fingers, they started burning. and they were in such bad shape and they were getting really dry i had to i wanted to protect my hands and so i have these ski liners you know you would put them underneath your gloves so i started wearing these liners to the gym and people were saying what do you what's with the liners nobody wears those and i just told them yeah i'm just you know trying to protect my hands it's it's you know because it's they're dry and they're saying okay and so I, it got worse and worse. And when I was at my computer, I had trouble even typing and just clicking on that mouse was extremely painful. And going for a walk that was not longer than my house, I couldn't do anymore because my feet were swelling so badly. My hair was falling out and I love spicy food. I would spice everything and I couldn't eat spicy food anymore. I couldn't eat salt, it would burn my lips. And actually the skin underneath my lip started disintegrating and it turned into this big red rash. When I would go out into the sun, even if I didn't get my face in the sun, like even if I just wanted to, you know, get my belly in the sun or my legs in the sun, my face would turn bright red. So I had what's called a malar rash. And what that looks like is a sunburn in the shape of a butterfly. And my toes, you know, my fingers, they would turn different colors from gray to really cold to this weird yellow color to this bright red scarlet color. And the, the skin on my toes started peeling off, like it started dying. And I must, I would, call my doctors and I was going in for all these tests and seeing all these different specialists and I was constantly having doctor's appointments. And, you know, there were several times where I called the nurses and they said, you need to go to the ER. And, but I was afraid because this was in 2020. So this was, um, this was during the peak of COVID and I didn't want to catch COVID. I didn't, I was afraid that if I went there, I would not only get COVID, but they would amputate my toes, my fingers, maybe even my feet. I was in such bad shape and I was in so much pain that my fingers and my toes were burning so badly that I was putting ice on it and I couldn't even sleep. So until my husband found online that there's these ice mittens and you can put these little packets of ice in the mittens and I was able to, and it was cold. So I would wrap myself in a blanket and I would put these ice packs on my hands and my feet. And that's how I was able to fall asleep. And so 
Yeah, and so I, I luckily I found these compression socks where you can put your little toes in it because I was my little toes just touching together. That just touching was heat. That was warmth from one toe to the other, and that caused me pain. So what I was doing is before I got the socks, I would get tissue paper and I would wrap each toe so that they wouldn't touch each other. <laughs> and uh, so after I found those, I got rid of the, and I was able to get the little little toe socks. Next. Let me find the next here. Okay. There you go. So I asked the doctors to run all these different tests and I believe there's about eight different diabetes antibodies. They only tested me for one. So I had them test me for almost all of them, not all of them, but most of them. Some of them they, they uh, couldn't find and I had to go to different, different labs to get this test. And finally, I was confirmed as a diabetic with the, the uh, ZNT8 as a zinc transporter uh, antibody test. So I had extremely high antibodies. And my dermatologist diagnosed my conditions as Raynos and erythromalalgia. It's actually pronounced Raynos. And that was from a French doctor. So that's his last name in the late 1800s. And he died from heart disease, ironically. Next. So you can see how my fingers looked. So that was in December. As it gets colder, it gets worse. And because of what was happening, I thought, okay, I need to change something. If you don't, if you keep doing the same thing, you're not going to get better. So I start searching online to see why this happens. And I found these forums where type 1 diabetics were getting Raynos, but a lot of them were getting this erythromalgia, the swelling and the fingers and the toes, the, the burning. And then I started looking at the ingredients in the insulins. And they all have something called phenols. And that's spelled P-H-E-N-O-L-S. So my insulins have trace amounts of phenols. And they also have an ingredient called metacresol. Those are both phenols. And phenols are preservatives. But what they also are, are cytotoxic. They damage the, the cells. And so I went to the podiatrist and I told him, this is my, my assumption that the, having the diabetes for over something like, I think it's like 14 years, 13, 14 years, an accumulation of all those phenols were building up and it was destroying my nerves. And he said, he was actually shocked that they have phenols and in insulin because this podiatrist said he uses phenols to kill nerves. So what I did is I took myself off the insulin. I talked about it briefly earlier where I was eating this ketogenic diet and I was off insulin. I was exercising and because I'm type 1.5, I was able to manage the blood sugars with low, uh, low carbs and this, uh, this ketogenic diet. And so, but it got worse and worse. So it was harder and harder to control my blood sugars with this exercise, extreme exercise regimen. Because I have, I have two, you know, I own two companies. So I'm trying to have a real life. And so I was working with a nutritionist and she said, well, I had her analyze my diet. And again, it was 85 to 90% from fat from nuts and seeds. And the, the fats that I was eating at the time, and actually I was eating very little oil at that time. I was eating a lot of tofu. I was eating cocoa powder, coconut. I was eating tons of nuts, about 800 to 1,000 calories of nuts a day, lots of seeds. I was eating good foods like greens, onions, garlic, broccoli. I was making soups with broccoli, and I would have cauliflower, and I would drink smoothies with almond milk. And I was eating a little bit of fruit. And, and vegetable because I know everybody knows you gotta have your, your fruit and your vegetables. So I did have a little bit, I would have like a half a banana or just like you know a quarter cup of beans a day. So very good, very little fiber. And so I was in bad shape. And when I added the fish, 
you know, we think, oh, fish is so good with, with of, uh, you know, it's got the omega-3s. Well, <laughs> all fruits and vegetables and plant foods have omega-3s. And so fish are very toxic. You know, the, it's, there's so, like, it's got the mercury, it's got all the pollutants. So I got so much worse when I ate the fish. Next, please. So when I was having these Raynos, uh, actually before I got the diagnosis, I was eating a dairy-free standard American diet. Uh, then I progressed to the vegan diet with processed foods, sugar, and oils. And then when I got figured that it might have been the phenols, I went to a vegan keto diet and 85% of my calories were from plant fats. And then, I, of course, I added the fish. Next. So my hypothesis is that it was not only from the phenols and the insulin, but it was a combination of factors. Sometimes it's usually just not one thing. Uh, it was eating animal products my entire life. Animal products harm your entire body. They harm your nerves, your cells. They clog your arteries. and and so I started having, I realized some, when I looked back, my heart was actually falling out when I was eating animal products. And there's a lot of harmful things in our environment. But when you are eating toxic foods, animal products, sugars, oils, that your body has a hard time eliminating the toxins. Next. So when I was ill, these doctors could not help me. They said, we don't know. I went to, I don't know, five, six, seven specialists. I spent over a thousand dollars in just doctor appointments alone and, this, and all these lab works and it was telling me nothing. So I started getting all these health books on everything, not just diabetes, but heart disease and cancer. I was reading everything to figure out, maybe I can figure this out since these doctors won't. I went online and I was looking at all different journals and seeing what other people were saying. I would spend at least three hours every single day just doing reading and trying to figure, figure it out, seeing if I could try something new. So I found a book called Mastering Diabetes. And I found this book because I was watching YouTube. And these two gentlemen, uh, Robbie and Cyrus, they are type 1 diabetics and they were eating a ketogenic diet and they are athletes they're in great shape and and they their insulin resistance was getting worse so what that means is their blood sugars were going up and they couldn't understand why and i thought oh my goodness that's me we have something in common they figured it out and so when I was listening to this one hour presentation from these two brilliant gentlemen, one is a doctor and one, one um, I don't know his certifications, but they, uh, they figured it out because what they did is they, they did, he yeah, has a doctor, he's able to have access to all these journals, is fat is what causes diabetes. It causes type 2 diabetes and it's the animal fats that trigger it. So a high fat diet makes it much, much worse. So the fat gets into your, your liver cells and your muscle cells, and then the blood sugar stays in our bloodstreams. So I was doing the wrong thing. I was like, wow, so the fat is the problem. That's, that's what I need to do. So they were saying what you need to do is you need to do a high carb, low fat diet, then you can go vegan, then you have blood sugar control. And I was so excited because I'm like, I love potatoes. I love fruit. I loved my fruit smoothies. So I was super excited to get on board and I was scared because what that meant is I had to have insulin and I had to have more insulin. And I thought, all right, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my fats and I'm just going to be really, really hungry for a week. And then I'm going to slowly increase my carbohydrates. Next, please. So you can see my results. So seeing is believing. So love is my ketogenic diet. You can see I have a really 
I don't know if that's a bad case of Ray knows, but you can see my toes uh, were black because they were not getting circulation because I had so much fat from those nuts and the seeds that were blocking the circulation from getting to my extremities. And um, you can see also next to my pinky toe, that toe was swollen and it hurt so inc incredibly badly. Now that middle toe, I do have a toenail, it's called a hammer toe. <laughs> it's just, it, it's just bent. So <laughs> on the right, right is my, my March of 2021. My, my, I should actually take a new, a new picture but my foot looks even better today. So that is a low fat diet. So I eat 10 to 15% of my calories from fats, very, very low in fat. And I found this is, was so fantastic for weight loss and for my circulation, my hair stopped falling out. So this is my hair today. So it's not as thick as it was, but you know, when I have you know, severe damage to my nerves, and it will take time. But the cool thing is after five to seven days on this low fat, high carbohydrate diet, just five days, my pain went away. I can do everything I used to do. I no longer get the rash. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that, that just taking a shower was painful. So in the winter time is when these flare ups occur and they get really, really bad. So I had to take cold showers because, and they were basically as short as I could because it was so, so painful because just standing, I, the, the, it just, my, my feet went very, very quickly and I couldn't even sit. I had to stand almost all the time. When I went to the doctor's office to see those doctors, I had to, I asked them if I could please stand because it was so painful to sit, but I have no pain anymore. Great circulation. And I, and now, so now instead of 80% plus fat, no, I flipped it. So now I eat about 80% from carbs on my low fat plant-based vegan diet. I have no oils and I have large, large portions. And my husband and I realized we can't eat our little portions. So we had, you know, a regular bowl. So we've got these big bowls, they're size of my head. We fill them up and then we got new plates. So our plates are this big and I, we fill them up and I lost weight. So yeah, really exciting. So I went from 25% body fat to about 15 to 16% body fat. Next, look at my fingers today. Again, high carb, low fat, 100% vegan. I am never eating any meat again. I don't wanna breathe it in. I will not serve it to my guests. I feel guilty feeding it to my cat, but um, yeah, I, I will never go back. I feel so good and this diet makes me excited. Next. So you can see my photo on my left. I am curvier, <laughs> but I was eating a dairy-free standard American diet. I was doing a lot of cardio and my cholesterol in my 30s was 201. The doctors want to put me on cholesterol lowering medication in my 30s that was crazy and so i did it with diet that's me on the right and about 40 years old i switched from lots of cardio to heavy weight training so as you see i am not a big person and i lift heavy weights and you will not get really muscular unless you're eating lots of calories or shooting steroids so I eat, and this is on my low fat plant-based vegan diet. There is a 14 pound difference. And the 14 pounds is pure fat because I gained muscle. My cholesterol right now ranges around 150. Next. So this is something my husband made. We are been both vegan for over two years now. And so he made these sweet potato nachos. And again, no oils. And when I went to my doctor, I get all my blood work rechecked, you know, as a new vegan, I want to make sure I'm doing everything right. And I said, how's my protein? Should I eat more beans or more lentils? He said, no, your protein levels are perfect. And he said, in fact, a low protein diet is more beneficial to health. I was floored because this is not a plant-based doctor. This, he is not vegan 
but he was telling me the truth. No one told me the truth before. So hopefully more and more doctors are going to get on board and tell their patients the truth. Next. So I also wanted to share my calcium. So since I was born with a dairy allergy, I never had milk, I never had cheese, I never had dairy. And the time that I did, of course, you know, I got extremely sick. So I, most of my life, I've been an omnivore and I would take calcium supplements. And, and back in 2017, my calcium was a 9.2 and then it was in the normal range. So this year, just recently, I got my calcium rechecked. I do not take any calcium supplements. I eat a nice big salad every day with lots of fruit and I love it. And uh, I've got recipes on how to make my salads. And um, I've never liked salads, but I love them now. So I do not take any calcium supplements. I'm 100% vegan and look, my calcium scores went up to 10.1. So if you guys wanna screen print this and share this with people who think that they have to have dairy, mm -mm -mm, you do not. And if people say, well, you need meat because you, you're gonna get anemia. Well, guess what? I was borderline anemic when I was eating my, my meat diet. What can cause anemia is calcium, too much calcium, calcium supplements, and menstruation. And people can get an iron overload from having iron supplements and eating animal products because animal products uh, contain heme iron, which the body does not know what to do with because we are not meant to eat animal protein. We are meant to eat plant protein. So when our body's eating the right things, it can regulate and it can balance everything properly. So on a vegan diet, if we eat too much protein or calcium, it can balance it out so that it's at the right level. Next. So I got an email from Scripps and I wanted to share it with you guys because again, I was completely shocked when I got this. The, the heading, I had to save this and I put it, I put it on my, my social media site. Look, Scripps Insurance is letting everyone know plant-based diet is good for health. It says here, I'll read out, do you know that eating a plant-based diet can help lower your cholesterol? decrease blood sugar, and help you lose weight. So if you guys want to screen print this, that is, I mean, that is a shout out for sure. Next, please. So if you still don't believe me, well, just look at your, <laughs> your can, your carton of oats. This is the one I got from Vaughn's supermarket. It says right on there, low fat. Low cholesterol diets reduce heart disease. Well, what has cholesterol? Plants don't, vegan food don't. The only things that do are dairy products, animal products. Those have cholesterol. You get rid of those foods, you're on a, you're on a zero cholesterol diet. This says low cholesterol, but why eat it? Our body makes it. So it also says low fat. Well, if you eat animal products and dairy, all that stuff, oils, that's high fat. So what this is saying is eating a vegan diet, but it says it reduces heart disease. Well, what it didn't say is a low-fat plant-based diet reverses heart disease. Next, please. So when I was doing my 100% vegan, the things that we found the most challenging, or for me, was finding recipes. So I wrote a dairy-free cookbook and it was uh, back in 2016. I completely revamped it, revised it. And I, me and my husband started cooking and we created recipes so that other people can go vegan and it'll be easier. So this is one of my recipes and it's not cheese. Again, I've never eaten cheese. So this is uh, broccoli and my cheese sauce is plant-based. It's whole foods. It's it's potatoes and carrots and nutritional yeast. So people want like, I need high protein, whatever. <laughs> but it's got lots of protein in it. So, but plant sources. So it's got spices in it. I, had a, I think I have tried it, made it like five different times and I perfected it. So that one is in my cookbook and it's called the High Five Diet and tells my story. Next. 
Okay, this is another one of my favorites. So I call it Greek zoodles. And zoodles are zucchini that you make into noodles. And it is so delicious. And it's got chickpeas, which is a wonderful bean legume next. And this looks like it's fried. Uh, uh You can make food taste like it's fried. And this batter is actually, I uh, believe I made it with cannellini beans and it's baked. Next. And I do have a sweet tooth, it never went away. But you can make healthy foods without sugar or oils yes. that are with whole food. Yeah, so this one, it's raw, it's vegan, I've got, it's made with macadamia nuts, coconut flakes, and it's completely decadent. And it's really a great little, little treat that, that everyone will like. Next. This one is with zoodles, and you can just, if you want your pasta, you can make this, but it's a, a creamy white bean Italian dish, which I love with rosemary. Next. And people say they need their cheese. Here you go. It's, it's vegan, you betcha. Next. And, you know, people love their granola. So this is like a three minute dish. No oil, no maple syrup. I actually just served this to my mom and her boyfriend. And I'm, I'm working on getting him vegan. He's, he's more so now. And my mom was saying, how did you get this to be so sweet? And I've got the recipe, so I can, that's in my book as well. And my husband came up with this one. It's these tacos. So we have a friend who just mainly eats meat and we have brought him over. We said, we're giving you tacos. And he was like, wow, I love this. So every time he comes over, he's like, what do we get to eat? And he will eat our food. So you just gotta present people with your favorite dishes. You don't wanna sample them. You want to make sure that these are the ones that people will like. I mean, if you give someone just a salad, then they're going to think that's all vegans meat, eat. Because that's what I used to think. I used to think vegans, all they eat are salads and fruit. And I can't subsist on this. But this tastes amazing. It's next. And I love my potatoes. And this one is a no oil. Yep. And it's got potatoes. And we've got tofu in there. And it's just amazing. Next. And this is wonderful for Thanksgiving. So instead of pecan pie, I really suggest you try smaller little portions of these desserts. So I made these pecan pie cookie bites and they are raw, they're vegan. It's, um, it's got you know cinnamon and just the right amount of spice and you can have a little, little um, little bite and again vegan whole food and good for you next and I've you know there's soups that you can make that don't take much time just showing people there's many options on a vegan diet there's tons thousands hundreds next and one of my favorite cells I put this one in my book as well next Okay, so this one I wanted to share with you. It's my chocolate pumpkin. Um, why did I say pumpkin? <laughs> I've got pumpkin on the brain. <laughs> so if you want to play this four minute video and uh, I can show people how I made it. Well, I'm just going to hit next. Is that going to play it? Uh, no, you actually click the photo. Okay. Oh, I see it. Uh -huh. I created quick and easy four ingredient, low fat, plant based, oil free healthy vegan chocolate popsicles that don't contain sugar, dates, coconut, and are incredibly delicious. You want to use very ripe bananas because these are sweeter and it will make your popsicles creamier. It ends up being one banana per person. Blend this first without adding any of the other ingredients. Blend it so that it's creamy, there's no chunks. And then we'll add cocoa powder, which gives it that wonderful, rich chocolate flavor. I'm using tahini, which is a sesame seed. And this gives it a wonderful richness, a little bit of fat. I do like a lot of vanilla flavor. 
And when you are making a raw dish, in other words, you are not heating it, you want to make sure to use vanilla that does not have any alcohol in it. Otherwise, your dessert will not taste right. It will taste like alcohol. Um, I do not like vanilla powder because it just doesn't have a very strong vanilla flavor to it, in my opinion, at least not the ones I've tried. Now, vanilla is extremely expensive right now, so if you do not have vanilla, it's okay. This will still taste absolutely delicious. Blend again. Make sure you are using a food processor and not one of these like this, because these require liquid and the suction, so it, it won't it won't blend properly because this has no milk. And the reason why I don't put almond milk in it is because I really want it to taste creamier, more like an ice cream than like an icing. So this will take about six hours to freeze. If you want to make a creamier type of popsicle, I like to add a little bit of tahini on one side of the popsicle. You just use a half a teaspoon and just drizzle that on. Totally optional. It tastes good with and without it. Now you can click the, the next one. I created quick and easy floor ingredient. <laughs> Is this the same one? Oil free. No, uh, click next. But don't you can click to stop it. There, there you go. go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think we can get you the, the recipe notes and uh, the, the notes below. So and and next week I'm gonna show how we're gonna make candy candies with with those uh like uh, chocolate peanut butter cups next week so those are just amazing so let's see so uh okay so my website is the high five diet.com and so if you want people to get the really delicious recipes have them order my book and I have several, but this is the one that um, I recommend for people transitioning because it not only shares my story and the most delicious vegan recipes that will transform at least any meat eater to at least, you know, be open to trying these. And, and you can make these and, and bring them to uh, wherever. So for instance, there is, I have, I think I have to figure out which one that is. I have this, this one recipe. It is chocolate cupcakes. And so what I did is I, when before COVID, when I was, I was at the gym, I would make these chocolate cupcakes and I would tell people what was, what most of the ingredients. Well, first of all, I would just say, you know, they're gluten-free, there's no sugar, you know, they're, they're, there's no animal products. Make sure they didn't have any allergies. And then I would ask them, even these big, big bodybuilders, you know, you want to try my cupcake? And they were hungry, you know, they were just lifting weights and they were like, yeah, I, I think I only had one person say no. I mean, who says no to a vegan healthy cupcake, <laughs> especially when they're hungry? So I had all these people try it and they were like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And, and so people were buying my, my desserts cookbook because, and, and they were getting really interested. And so, I would have as many people as I could try them. And I would tell them, and after you buy it, I'm gonna tell you the secret ingredients. And so after I, I tried, I had them try it, they were like, wow, I can't believe there's no flour, or sugar, or butter in there. And I said, yeah, you can make healthy taste good. And I said, do you wanna know the secret ingredient? And they're like, hmm, <laughs> they're a little scared. And they said, sure. I said, it's a vegetable. And it was zucchini. So uh, yeah, so you can get people to try things. Um, 
yeah, just make it look really pretty. And, and so that's, that's what I've been doing for, for many, many years. And so I also have a blog called realdiethelp.com. And I, and I know that with a lot of people, they'll, they'll think about something and then they'll forget about it. Oh, you know, it's like, so I tell people to sign up for my blog and you get weekly, not just reminders, but you get recipes, exercise videos, and all my videos at the very end, I just have a little bit, little tidbit about the benefits of weight loss with a vegan diet and why it's healthy. And so we need reminders for all those people. So I tell them, don't just sign up for my blog, watch other videos, sign up. I want them every single day. I want them to get some sort of video, email, reminder that this is super healthy and this is what we need to do and you're gonna feel amazing and it's gonna protect you. So uh, the books that I have on the high five diet and then you can um, get out of the screen and I, if you want to do show me full, I can show you the other books that I have. Yes, if I can figure out how to do that. Okay, let's see here. Five, so uh, on, on the high five diet, I know someone was asking me um, when I did another presentation, uh, the all recipes and I'll show you my book and this book and make sure it's the one where I'm wearing orange the other one you don't want because that's the the dairy free one you want the newest one that i published this year there's only one that has flour and oil and that one is a it is a broccoli soup and just for what they can do is just swap the those ingredients out for a, a can of coconut milk and it should work and then my other one my dessert stuff, but I, I have a ton of desserts in, in that one. This is my desserts cookbook and it is does say slimming dairy free, but these are all vegan. So I updated this one as well. And so this one even has a fudge recipe. And, and again, it's like dates and nuts and just healthy stuff. I have also, which I don't have a copy here, but it's a food diary which people can fill out and they get, the, it's a points list. So if they eat any animal product, or any oil, they get a point taken away. <laughs> and so uh, they try to rack out points. And this is another book I have. It's a weightlifting record book. And I just, you can buy these little tabs. So it's got exercise. So I'm, I'm all about health. It's not just food and what people sleep to. So I, I try to help people with, you know, the, the exercise, the weight loss, the positive, um, and of course the diet and nutrition aspect of it. So that uh, everyone could be as healthy as they can. So yeah, and, and um, later today I'm going to text my neighbor and I'm gonna, I just made some banana bread. I came up with a banana bread recipe, I'm super excited. And so I'm going to, uh, send her a text and ask her if she would like to try my banana bread recipe. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this is very exciting. And I want to ask, I have a few questions and I wonder if anybody has questions for watching Ellen um, about the tahini. So I don't, tahini, I don't remember. Do you put that in hummus? Is that right? Yes. Yes. It's, it's a sesame seed. And you can swap that out. So if, if you want to do sunflower butter, if you want to do almond butter would be amazing. Of course, the best is peanut butter, but I know some people are afraid of peanut butter or they can't tolerate it. So, and if you want, if you want to do no, uh, no overt fats, um, although it is chocolate, but you can take that out. It, it will still be good. So I, I actually, because I have a sensitive, actually did I say sensitivity to, to uh, nuts, but if I eat, uh, more than just a teensy bit of nuts, I will gain weight. You know, if I eat a little bit every day, a week later, I'm a, of a pound heavier and it goes right to my belly. So uh, I really try not to eat very, very little bit. And it's tough because like you eat one and then you want 50, at least for me. So, and for me, it doesn't fill me up. I just want more. I understand that feeling. Yes. And so this in the series, because in the, we did a community for the grass certified grassroots ambassadors, 
we're going to be having the next five series, the next five presentations. So can you tell us a little bit about that? And this is for yes. the certified ambassadors, which is a, only $47. It's amazing because we've got you, we've got keynote speakers every weekend to empower us through the holidays. We're having a... Yeah. You want me to discuss what's going to yeah. be in the, the next ones? Right. Okay. So um, we're going to still fine tune it. So what we'd like you to do is as the audience, let us know what you want. Uh, and I love questions. Please, please ask me your questions. Um, you can post it on your the Facebook pages because we want to give you what you need to encourage others. And so this is what I've got so far. Let's see. So, so the next episode, chocolate peanut butter cups recipe and how to introduce a vegan diet, uh, a vegan Thanksgiving, okay? Uh, next episode, baked apples with banana cream and how to get others to try vegan holiday treats. After that, berry crumble granola recipe and how to go vegan over the holidays. Episode five, oil-free, sugar-free, sweet and spicy popcorn and how to influence by looking and acting as a vegan role model. And the other one, I'm thinking of a weight, a plant-based weight loss because you can be plant-based and gain weight. So I've got all sorts of things for that. And then for future episodes, another one I thought was, I talked to Peter and I thought was really important is, you know, you can, we need it. There's too many diabetics out there, too many type two. And we can help not just type two, we can type me. Type one. I am actually a type one now, not type 1.5. So, um, and actually I believe that if I was vegan my whole life, my body would have been strong enough to fight the chicken pox virus and it wouldn't have harmed me because as a, someone with dairy allergies, a dairy allergy or, or allergies to foods, that's an autoimmune response. And when someone has autoimmune reactions over time they will accumulate more which is what happened to me it happens to everyone so if you keep eating harmful foods like like oils and animal products and for some people it's gluten so i got rid of gluten too and uh that then the problems will go away and, and it will reduce their chances of of getting cancer because their their immunity will be stronger um, not autoimmunity, but immunity. But the other thing is, so the next so the next one I want to talk about is uh, helping people who are type two and type one increase their insulin sensitivity with foods. Now there are plant-based foods that make it harder. And then for for type ones, I also recommend type ones eat different foods than type two, even though they're both plant-based. It's the little nuances that make the difference. Was there a question over there that was popping up? Yeah, I accidentally hit it too soon. Here we go oh. from Ellen. And Ellen, let us know if you have any requests. I know that you are in the certified ambassador, so. So she's been. Yes, she's so, so yes, go we ahead. definitely want to find out. Um, yeah, I love PCRM. I donate to them as well. I'm a member and then Yes, you want to cut out all oils. Absolutely, they damage our endothelial cells. They they block, you know, our our circulation, and so you want to limit the nuts and the seeds, and keep all the fats very very low. Uh, typically, you definitely want it under twenty percent if you're an athlete. For the rest of us, we try to keep it around fifteen. If someone has insulin sensitivity, they try to keep it at 10%. Well, how do we do that? I mean, I know, I didn't know because I was thought we have to have oil. So I did start cooking with vegetable broth. And what else can you recommend for people that haven't even ever, <laughs> like me, like, what do you mean? Yeah. We're talking, you know, so someone I, just said about coconut oil. Yeah, so every, you can check out my, the best thing to do is, well, I've got on, on my blog, 
you can just uh, realdiethelp.com. You can either go there and you can just go scroll to the bottom and then search for topics. And you can type in, you know, how to saute without oil. Or it might be if, if you a visual and you love YouTube, I love YouTube. <laughs> it's so fun to watch videos. So I have a, a I think it's a one minute video on how to saute without oil. And there's four different, I think it's four different ways. So you can either do it in water, you can do it with wine. People worry about alcohol, but the alcohol gets burned off because I do not do well with alcohol. So I am an alcohol free diet as well. Um, and so we've got water, we, and then you've got the, the vegetable stock. Um, so actually that's three. So any type of liquid will work. Oh, four, the fourth one um, is dry. So my, my, I do water because I will burn it. <laughs> my husband does the dry method. So he just watches it. And then he just, he does his quick little walk thing. So and when you have like even onions, the first thing you want to do is the onions. When it starts heating, it will release the oils. Uh, it will release all vegetable plants have oils. It will reduce, uh, the water will be released. And like you can actually dry saute mushrooms. If you put mushrooms in a pan and you just start cooking it with nothing, it will just completely, you'll see it'll start the water, it'll become dehydrated and uh, it tastes amazing. So yeah, you can absolutely cook with that oil and check out that, that video. When I put it on, it got, what was amazing, it got so many views because people were searching. They're actually looking for it. And so it has over 2,000 views right now. Well, that's great. Well, this is really wonderful information. And I hope everyone joins us in the, in our other community, the other We Did It Certified Ambassadors community. Um, and now the name is escaping me because I'm under pressure to, <laughs> to think of it. Thrive and Shine. Thrive and Shine community. So, and we're going to have to say goodbye, but this is amazing. I'm looking forward to all the great tips and desserts that you're going to Yeah. Present. Can we get some more questions? I love questions. Well, yeah, but we have to run actually. <laughs> we're, on, we're on for an hour. We've gone over, but. Oh, okay. Really, next you know, time, let's get some more questions. And yeah. And so we're going to spend more time next time on questions and answers. So get, get you know, write them down. And, um, I would love to answer them. And if I don't know, I'll look it up or send you to the right place. Yeah. And connect with Nina on Facebook, right? Where Facebook. I, I would say Facebook is not great. I would say YouTube for sure is the best. And I do check my comments there and then sign up for my blog. And then if you, you know, if you sign up for it, forward it to your clients. And, you know, if you want to collaborate with me, Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's good to work with other people. And, and you know, the, the more brilliant minds come together, we can come up with something amazing. Amen. And I, this is perfect for a few friends that I have in mind. I'm going to be sending this over. So thank you so much for yeah. joining us, Nina. And thank you, Ellen, um, everyone for watching, watching on the replay. Please let us know your questions for the next time. And Connect, definitely connect with Nina because she's full of life. Look at her. So this diet is really serving her. Look at her. Amazing. I can't wait to try this, the strawberry bread. I'll send you a photo of it when we get off. <laughs> Don't send me a picture. You're torturing me. I, I know. I keep making you hungry. <laughs> yeah. But no, go ahead and send me a photo. Okay. So, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Nina. Bye.